Good morning and welcome to everyone for our seventh annual Charter School Leaders of Color Capitol Hill Initiative uh, and convening. Um, we are virtual again for the second year in a row, uh, unfortunately, but we appreciate you all being in attendance and thinking it, as my church pastor always says, thinking it not robbery to be here uh, out of your busy day. We know you all are running incredibly um, high, high quality, high performing charter schools across the nation and taking a little bit of time to be part of our day to day uh, to get valuable information and interact with your peers uh, is very important. Uh, and also spending a second day with us on tomorrow, speaking with your federal representatives, uh, both in Congress and in the U.S. Senate. Uh, we thank you uh, for, for making the time. Uh, we are uh, on the last day of Black History Month. Uh, and our prayers are also for those in the Ukraine right now as they fight uh, against uh, against uh, the attacks and and the invasion that is happening in that in that particular part of the of, of the world. Um, today we are 43 uh, participating members, uh, charter school leaders coming from 21 states in the District of Columbia. So welcome, applaud for yourselves. That is the most states represented at our annual convening that we've ever had. And so we're very pleased that this is growing and participation is growing uh, and that your peers are growing and are participating. Uh, without further ado, because time is of the essence and we've kept this uh, session and this day brief, uh, but also focused, uh, I wanna kick it over. And, uh, let me just also say we're very proud that this particular session is sponsored by Google, who are partners with us and to tell you a little bit more about that in this panel, I'm going to kick it over to Jennifer Fadden Barth. Jennifer, it's all yours. Thank you, Ron. Good morning. And thank you so much for having us today. As Ron said, my name is Jennifer Faden Barth, and I'm the partner manager um, with for the National Alliance for Public Charter Schools. And as some of you may or may not know, Google has been in partnership with the National Alliance um, since last summer. The goal of this partnership from the Google perspective was to further our mission, which is to improve equitable access to computing education by optimizing our programs along the CS education pathway. And for CS, it is always computer science in our world. So uh, just know that now. At any rate, um, part of that mission for um, us is to expand learning accessibility for all. And Google's elevating this by um, seeking a commitment with um, educators who are teaching those who are of historically marginalized groups. And I was so excited when I was working with the National Alliance to learn of the ex existence of SLOC. Um, you're a unique and very special organization. And we're really excited to be fostering this relationship with you, albeit we thought we were gonna be meeting in person. We're so glad to be here virtual today sponsoring this event. I'm eager for us to get to today's panel, but before we get started, I want to announce um, our final initiative as part of this year long partnership, which will happen this summer. And it's going to be pandemic uh, rules and, and public health trajectory still going in the right direction. We are going to be hosting a school leader of color plus educators, so school leader of color and friends summit in Los Angeles in one of our offices um, right here on the west side. Um, You'll be receiving a survey at the end of today's webinar and event. So we hope you will fill that out. It's going to be really important to informing how we craft this agenda. Um, it's about a day and a half that we're looking to plan right now. And so we really hope to see you there. Please bring an educator because we do believe it's such an important um, community to bring in not just the decision makers and leaders of schools and school districts, but also those educators in the classroom. Um, we look forward to seeing you and you'll We'll be hearing more about that event very soon. But without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our panel. Thanks, Jen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shanika Hope. I serve as Director of Computer Science Outreach and Insights at Google. Um, but I am a 20-year public education teacher, administrator, uh, parent, uh, and have had the privilege of leading and working directly in public charter schools in Washington, D.C., specifically with Friendship Public Charter Schools. So I am really part of this village, and I'm thrilled to have this opportunity to have a conversation today with Mache, who uh, is my 
uh, my esteemed panelists that I'll, I'll be that we'll, we'll be having a conversation with together. So I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Mashay to allow her to introduce herself. Um, thanks. And I want to say your name right. Say your first Shanika. name right. Shanika. Thanks, Shanika. Um, and to the National Alliance for Public Charter Schools, I feel incredibly proud and quite humbled, quite honestly, to be with this group um, to talk a little bit about Digital Pioneers Academy, to talk a little bit about CS and what we've learned. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to the time when we are all going to be in person and can break bread, but also really just share the secret sauce that so many of you are already know about what works for our scholars. With that, should I jump in, Shanika? Or yeah, that'd be great. Let's start with your work. Okay. Um, so again, thank you so much. Um, and you have to cut me off because I will talk all day long about this work. I uh, It is the most rewarding. It's also the most challenging. Um, but um, so... I am the founder and principal of Digital Pioneers Academy. Uh, we have an amazing mission to develop the next generation of innovators. We really want our scholars to not just consume the digital economy, but be a part of creating it. And because of that, we are unapologetic college prep, computer science, and committed to serving all students. We are currently a six through nine with the vision to ultimately be a six through 12 public charter school here in Washington, DC. And I think just to, to start off with our mission around innovation, it is, it is um, we were really founded on this idea that um, right here in our nation's capital, we know there is an education gap. Um, but as I thought about it and members of our founding team thought about the opportunity gap, we know that there were 1 million high paying, high demand jobs that were gonna go unfilled in the computer science industry. And so we just thought there is clearly a supply of talent in Southeast Washington, DC, like there's a supply of talent all across the country, particularly low income, working class, black and Latino students. How do we close this gap? And that's really what inspired Digital Pioneers Academy. And for us, computer science focus is about two things. Yes, we want our scholars to have access to the technical skills of computer scientists, being able to create apps and websites and games, but we also want them to have the computational thinking skills of computer scientists. That is being able to read complex text, to be able to problem solve, to innovate, and to create. And that's really what Digital Pioneers Academy uh, is all about. I know I've been asked two questions. I'm happy to jump in, but I wanna see Shanika, should I keep going? Or if I should jump in about one, the challenge around access and then how we might work together, how Google could help not just Digital Pioneers Academy, which I hope you will, but all schools. Yeah, I'd love to hop into the questions, but something that you said sparked a, a wondering for me. You talked about the initial, you know, the the unapologetic focus on not just the academic, the rigor, but also being explicit about computer science. You mentioned the 1 million unfilled jobs. I'm curious, as you look at the world that we're in today, we're still living within a pandemic that looks like it's transi transitioning to an endemic. Um, how do you keep that, that laser-like focus on computer science when we know schools are dealing with learning loss? So give me a sense of like, how do you balance that? How do you message that to your board, but also to your community, to parents who are wondering what's going on with my kids with reading? Are they, are they on track? Are they competitive? What's going on with mathematics and some of the gaps there? Give us a sense of how you're dealing with that every day. Yeah, it's a great question. And I, I think it, um, it's, it's easy for me because for us, being unapologetic college prep and unapologetic computer science means we are both and. It is not either or. We focus on ELA and math just like we focus on computer science because these are the skills that I think this pandemic, the social unrest that's happened over these last years have just proven that our scholars, particularly the scholars who have the least amount of resources, need access to computer science, to technology. And um, at, D at Digital Pioneers Academy, we talk a lot about facing the brutal facts, but not lowering the bar. And the brutal facts are that at the beginning of this pandemic, uh, the students and families who suffered the most because of the pandemic 
also suffer the most because of the education opportunity gaps and a huge uh, multiplier effect was access to technology. Um, do you have Wi-Fi? Do you have a Chromebook? Can you stay connected? And for us, uh, when this pandemic first hit, we said to our families three things. We have to stay connected. We have to keep our community together. And you can do that with technology through Zoom or any other way that you we could stay connected. Um, and the second is that learning can still continue. Um, and I think what we are focused on is now, uh, this is actually, I was talking with my team. We were a one-to-one -one school before, um, but I think this pandemic is actually requiring us to think our scholars need to be two to one. We, our scholars need Chromebooks at home and they need Chromebooks in school because learning has to continue all the time. So, you know, I think for us, it's, it, is, it is part of who we are. And um, I think at the beginning of this pandemic, we, just to be honest, the first two weeks, we did really, really well because we already had the Chromebooks. We made sure our families had, had Wi-Fi, but it was really six months into the, the first full year of the pandemic when we knew we were going to be virtual that we actually really recognized the technology gap. Um, on our first day with our new students, when they couldn't log into virtual learning, we are like, what's going on? And, and we realized it was all user error. And so I think with that, and this is what I, I believe many school leaders are experiencing right now is it before it was like technology was like, yes, you had a, a laptop car or a lab, maybe you had access. Now, we, I believe there's no way we can function with closing education gaps, keeping our community together if every student across the country doesn't have access to Wi-Fi and a device, there's no way we close opportunity education gaps in this pandemic and also innovate for the future. No, that's an important point. And you, you've touched on a number of ways that I know that Google and, and other organizations have stood with, with schools um, and school leaders is by helping to address the access issue. So you know, Google has, we have google.org, which has provided millions of dollars to support access. You mentioned Chromebooks to, to ensure that every student has the necessary tools to continue their learning. And so at Google, we, we are a learning first company. Yes, our mission is to organize the world's information, but as part of that, we also wanna ensure that that organized information en enables everyone to continue their learning. And so when you think about, um, how to best leverage industry. Mache, I'm curious, you know, we talk about, you mentioned the hardware, but there's also this part about uh, where you mentioned being prepared. And I think about the future of work and ensuring that your students are ready. And part of being a leader is looking around the corner. Yes, we have to address the day-to-day, -day, but you also are having to look around the corner constantly. And so I'm thinking about, or I'm wondering, how are you and your, your teachers, um, how are you developing them? Google provides a lot of professional development support at no cost to teachers. We have a distance learning fund that we make available to ensure that teachers have access uh, to, to grants so that they can continue building their capacity. But as you lead uh, your, your school, your teachers, you stand with your teachers, are there specific things that you found that you had to do with your teachers to ready them? So now kids have access, but how do you make sure teachers understand how to use these tools to deliver powerful, impactful instruction? Yeah, it's a great question. And I know I'm talking to a lot of educators out there and I just have to say this, I took one computer science class in college. So I am not a computer scientist. I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm definitely uh, not a digital native as uh, many of our teachers and scholars are. That being said, when I launched uh, Digital Pioneers Academy, I, I asked myself that same question, like how can I talk with industry? How can industry like close the gaps? And so I went to the National Computer Science Teaching Conference, hoping to like find that answer. And what I found was a bunch of math, science, ELA teachers trying to figure it out themselves. And so I want to just say to our audience that you have amazing teachers. If they are curious enough, all the resources are there. I mean, you just mentioned, you know, Google uh, learning first and having all these platforms. That's the first thing. I think in our building of 60 staff, I have three 
teachers who actually studied computer science in undergrad or master's. So I want to just dispel this myth that there's not expertise within your buildings. Um, the second thing, as I think about partnering with Google and uh, other organizations, I think when it comes to closing the opportunity gap, particularly for uh, kids of color, I think of three things. One, they need the access. So they uh, they have to have access to computer science classes. They have to be able to um, have fun and tinker just to have the exposure. But the second thing that I think we are consistently looking for is the playbook and the coaching. To me, if we don't know the playbook in terms of how do our scholars access the high paying, high demand jobs that exist in computer science. Right now, it's still a mystery to our students and to many of our staff. Um, and then the coaching. Uh, it'd be one thing if you know we prepare our scholars to be proficient on all the standard tests, which is great. They also have to have the character, yes, to be great. But once they, if, if we could get the coaching that you need to be successful in these professional industries and opportunities, I think that is where industry can really partner with K-12 schools to open up the um, access and the opportunity. I think that's, that's right. And I think that that word that you just used, which is partnership, um, oftentimes, and having led schools personally, sometimes you feel like you're on an island in of, a, of yourself. And you even said this in your comments that you went to a national conference and you're finding that teachers and leaders are just like trying to figure it out. But there, there's something to be said about being in that broader community, the shared experience, and you all trying to solve and solve some of these, these challenges together. And there's, there's power in understanding that um, we're in this together and solving this together for, for a bigger, better goal. Um, someone dropped in, in one of the questions about uh, the, the, the actual the teacher professional development resources that Google provides. I've dropped that response there for you all uh, so that you can have access to that. Um, you know, teacher professional development, we realize is that's everything. A lot of research tells us 75% of a student's success is connected to the adult that's in front of them delivering the instruction. The other, which is interesting, you know, you look at the data, you would think well, that the parent would be a pretty powerful force, you know, force with the students learning, and they are. But the, the power of the teacher really does, um, is a, it has an index uh, that is demonstrated that that is, can really be transformative to the student's success or, or not in the classroom. And so I'm curious as you reflect on the curriculum, you reflect on um, how you structure opportunities for teachers to develop themselves, to share and cross pollinate their learning and what, what, what they're doing in their classrooms. Give us a sense of like, what does that level of effort look like? Do you have dedicated time set aside? Is there a lot of like active learning or peer reviews or observations that's happening in the classroom? Can you give us a sense of how you directly support your teachers and what that looks like in your building? Sure, that's also, um, it's, a, it's a great question around professional development and collaboration and planning. Uh, it is also very essential to our model, but I wanna say just really one thing that you said that really struck with me um, around parents um, and teachers and the impact of teachers. We, we say this all the time is like, for us at our school, everyone's a teacher, everyone's a founder, everyone has that responsibility because we know um, being on the front line and doing this work every single day, I would just wanna say it is incredibly hard and it is also incredibly rewarding. And when you ask, when you ask teachers, like what's the thing that they would make their life or their day easier? They would say, you know, parents as partners. And so I think it is, um, and that's really what we what we really try to emphasize is if parents were partners on this journey of, of achieving the mission of whether it's preparing for the next generation or being college and career ready, how might we operate differently? And 
for for I think for us, our what we know uh, is that our parents want their kids to secure these high paying high demand jobs. They also want them to have good character. And so I think if we are partnering with our parents on this journey, it really does allow us to achieve the big dreams and goals that we've shared. So again, I just wanted to 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 highlight that the parent part is incredibly important. Um, in terms of professional development, uh, it is also essential for us to collaborate and share. So again, we're a six through nine and our teachers all share and collaborate across the grade level. We have at least um, one professional development a week. We have an early release on Wednesday. So scholars leave at one o'clock and then from one to 4.30, teachers have time to collaborate and share. But then also during the regular school day, our teachers get at least 60 minutes minutes and sometimes up to 120 minutes a day to collaborate, to plan, and to share. And that's really just the in-house. Um, but we also provide our teachers the opportunity to get external um, training or resources, to go to online training and resources. Our teachers, if they see a class that they want to take, we encourage them to do that. Now, I am, I am, um, I'm sensitive to, we don't wanna ask our teachers to do one more thing because they are doing so much. Um, and so being able to create that space within the school day uh, and by having an early release does allow us to do that. But there are some teachers who really um, take advantage of those uh, online opportunities or weekend learning opportunities, or even um, during the summertime. Thank you. That's super helpful. And I, and I just want to underscore your point about the, the work that teachers do and the importance of that partnership with parents. We, we can't do this work well unless we have that partnership. And, and, and again, even just thank you to you. I, I, we, we've been, you know, as we watch and how this pandemic is playing out and we look at everything that teachers, school leaders are grappling with day to day, um, words can't express enough gratitude for, for, for how you all champion and, and push through and advocate, continue to advocate for, for our students. Um, I wanna pivot, something you mentioned about the future of work. And again, this idea of looking around the corner. And as we specifically think about students of color and the space of computer science, we know, for example, data tells us less than 3% of um, our current creators of technology are individuals of color and or female. Um, we also know that when we look at persistence and completion of post-secondary study, this is two year or four year degree. We, we know that many students of color that start the journey, they're falling out of that, of that, that pathway along the way. And so when you reflect on knowing that your building is six through nine and you said you have the aspirations of growing into a high school, when I think about industry and how we currently stand with schools. Google, for example, a lot of what we offer today are programs like a grasshopper, which is this mobile opportunity that allows kids and adults to learn coding very easily. And it's gamified. It's done in a way that you don't even realize that you're actually coding with Java or with Python. So it's done in a fun way with leaderboards and things to get kids and the user excited. We also have things like CS First, which is a video based um, curriculum that's typically for grades four through eight. And it's designed to, again, expose students to computer science in a way that allows them to identify, to see themselves. So you'll see in the videos, technologists of color, uh, women that are leading the work um, in this space and are creating amazing technology. Um, but also helping students to see that being a tech creator doesn't necessarily being a, mean being a coder or a software developer. It could be you're an entrepreneur. It could be you're doing leading a marketing campaign that uses a lot of data so that you can understand the needs of customers. And so trying to dispel and break these myths that technology or being in tech or computer science is just being on a keyboard by yourself kind of coding. Um, I'm curious as you, in particular with your eighth and ninth grade, um, how are you helping your students connect careers, but also see themselves identifying in, in technology? 
Yeah, it is a, a really great question. Uh, we, um, you know, there's pre-pandemic, there's post-pandemic, how we have uh, attempted to be able to do that. I do think the, the first thing is like, we tell our scholars every single day, like we are unapologetic committed to computer science because we want them to be the CEOs and innovators today and tomorrow. So we are constantly really inspiring them to be that next generation generation of innovators. So I think that's like point number one. Number two, uh, again, when we uh, were in in person learning prior to the pandemic and there, things were not shut down. We took our scholars to colleges to visit, to talk to other college students, to talk to CS students. We actually visited Google, um, took our scholars to the actual playroom. It was such a hit. Like they actually saw it. Like they saw the food that you all had. They saw the playroom, they saw the game. They could not believe like this was work. We're like, yes, these are the opportunities. Um, but one of the things that we did during the pandemic is we actually had guest speakers from one of our partner organizations and we asked them to have everyone who worked at the organization give their background give their bio and share their path and in that what scholars learn is like you can study computer science and work in hr and you can study computer science and work in talent you can study you know computer science and actually be a cybersecurity there's so many paths what they needed to understand is that we don't and, and we say this like it would be great if every single one of you all is a coder and you like make a billion dollars and come back and like help me out and then help the school that would be great. But the computational thinking skills are going to allow them to pursue what they are passionate by, what they are excited by. And I do think the exposure to more people, uh, sometimes people of color, but that also is not a requirement. They just need to see the multiple paths around how you can use these skills to fulfill your dreams, your hopes, and your passion. And that's why, um, and, and the way we did that, it was literally a 15 minute brown bag Zoom meeting where someone came on and just shared their background. And, and I, I'm, I am curious how you actually became interested in told your path to Google. I'm sure you didn't have the whole playbook when you were in middle school. That's what we're trying to do is give kids the playbook, give them the path. And sometimes that's just hearing the stories. Yeah, no, there really is power in, in the storytelling for sure. Um, and it, it's interesting as I listen to you share, my journey had, had similar connection points. Um, I naturally love puzzles, naturally love math. And so math was very easy. And it was through a teacher um, that said, hey, would you try this summer program? Uh, I was in middle school and my, my region had a program just for students of color where we actually lit, got to go to an HBCU, stay on campus for a few weeks. We completed you know, exploratory hands-on learning, but like to be on a college campus, to be around faculty that look like me in math and science, like that is what created the light bulb that, wait a minute, I, I actually belong here I, and mm -hmm. I can do it. And so having those summer learning experiences, but really also having an adult champion to say, Shanika, I want you to take this calculus course in high school. When I'm like, I'm done courses, like I can have an easy uh, senior year. Why would I do that? Um, but having that adult say to me, this is why you should do it. It's the right thing for you to do. And so those touch points along the way is what helped me to at least have the strong foundation so that when I got to college, I could have a lot of choices. And mm -hmm. ultimately my teacher, his, his name was Mr. Gilkey. He's what led me into education. That's how I actually became a teacher. Cause I was like, I want to do what Mr. Gilkey did for me. And then because of the math and science exposure, it opened up all of these other opportunities that allowed me to end up at a company like Google leading computer science education uh, globally. And so that's the thing that I like to share with students is like, just what you said, there is lots of paths to get to these different places of actually influencing and being a tech creator. Um, and that's what makes it so interesting. Like there is no single one way to do it. Um, and you're right, the power of the story is what can inspire kids. 
And that's one of the things that we also do here at Google is we, we have a number of student experiences. We have something called Code Next, which is a four-year high school experience where students come into a space, they're partnered with a Googler and other local um, technologists that are like their champion. And they we pre provide these summer experiences, ex experiential learning. And then at the end of that experience, they also get some financial support to help them to continue their post-secondary studies. Um, we also have in internship opportunities for college students. We have scholarship programs for college students as well, in particular for students of color, because we know that less than 4% representation in tech fields as creators of tech, that's, that's insufficient. Um, and so these are just some of the ways that Google tries to give back to do exactly what you described, which is to help kids see themselves and to understand that they belong and they can do it. And there is no one journey to get there, which is exciting. Um, I wanna go back and, and actually a question popped up in our, um, our chat back to parents. Um, there's a, there was a recent poll uh, survey that was put out by published by Gallup that actually showed that during the pandemic, girls in particular, their, I, their, their sense of belonging and identity in computer science has actually regressed, that it's actually gone backwards mm -hmm. since pandemic. I think we're seeing an, a regression of, of somewhere between mm -hmm. five to seven percent for students, and it was already low, to be clear. Um, and then what's also interesting in the same survey, it, it talked about the power of the parent because the parents influence or the caregiver where the parents ability to help students navigate and figure out careers. Like, you know, our parents being a doctor, where did that come from? Being a lawyer, where did that come from? It comes from the voices of the adults that are around us. And so one of the questions that came up and I'm curious is, you know, as you partner with parents and caregivers, are there specific kinds of training or workshops that you give parents or caregivers to support their kids, their, their children's learning? Oh gosh, man, you, you, I've got so many things I want to say about this. Um, well, and I wouldn't say there's anything specific. Um, and it really happens um, probably the first six weeks of a scholar with us taking computer science. I will tell you, half of them are like super excited and they learn to fail forward. And then the other half, I, I mean, I have so many scholars who are like, I cannot do this. Like, I don't get it. But after we really teach them about persistence and failing forward and problem solving to see that light bulb literally go off for a scholar when they actually get it, like there is no right answer. You just have to fail forward. You have to try, you have to um, try to make those connections. Our scholars are our best advocates and resources when it comes to explaining and bringing their parents up to speed about why computer science. Um, I I, I, I can also tell you some funny stories around how our scholars have used technology, um, sometimes not for the positive, uh, but there, for example, like I was so mad at one of our scholars. They posted a Google survey in on Instagram, but it was like, you know, who doesn't like Principal Ashton survey? And I was so excited that they knew how to use the Google survey and that they knew how to use these technology skills. I just had to tell them, hey, use these skills to make the world better instead of, you know, the survey around like, who doesn't like Principal Ashton? Um, but that being said, um, the thing that I think is the beauty of computer science and CS is that it's so under, you know, it's, it's under taught under, like we don't have a lot of CS teachers. And so when you think about it being new for parents and new for kids, it's new for everybody. So we can all learn together. And I think that is um, the tremendous opportunity. One more thing though, I wanna say about girls and technology um, and, and studying computer science. I am not surprised by that data. Um, and I can tell you in our first year, we were very intentional about our recruitment strategies. All of our pictures had pictures of girls with computers. Um, we, you know, I'm obviously, you know, a, a female founder. So like our first year in terms of recruitment, we were like 50, 50 boys and girls. The name of our school, we tried to make it not so computer science. So digital pioneers, it sounds not as, you know, technology. Those were all very intentional because as I talked to other school leaders, when you have the school that
that's called STEM, sometimes our girls just are not inclined to be excited. So we were very intentional about that. But during this pandemic, our, our split has changed to be 60-40 boy, boys to girls who were most interested. We haven't had that same opportunity to engage and to be um, connected to our family just because of the pandemic. And we are now having to go back to just remind, to remind ourselves and to make those connections. What I would say is it is about seeing mentors. It is about that early access, um, but it's also allowing them to see a path in the future uh, in terms of the opportunities. And that's why partnerships uh, and mentorships, all those things are uh, incredibly, incredibly important. Yeah, thank you for that. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I didn't realize that we were, you and I are actually neighbors. I, I live in DC as well. And so when you, when, uh, you've mentioned Southeast. I'm like, yep. Uh, I, I actually was a leader at Anacostia Senior High School, which is down the street from you. Yeah. Um, but your point about we're all learning together. One of the things that stood out, and and I'll drop it in in, in our message here for everyone, um, is back to the teacher again. And I, I can't harp enough about the teacher. One of the things that Google has done in partnership with George Mason University, and we're actually looking to replicate this across the country. We partner with George Mason University to provide paid teacher externships in the space of computer science, where teachers will get a several thousand dollar stipend. They will be paired with an industry partner in the community. Google is one of the, the industry partners as well. And teachers will work alongside of a technology team. They make George Mason will provide also a course where you get graduate credit hours to actually build curriculum that teachers will then take that curriculum, implement the following year in their classroom, still have that ongoing professional learning community that George Mason will um, facilitate. And if teachers so desire, Mason as part of this partnership will help teachers sit and prepare for the licensure for, uh, or the endorsement in computer science for their respective state. And partnerships like this are so important because it, number one, it sends the message back to teachers, you're important. Lifelong learning is important for you as well. And so we want to value you and stand with you and give you that opportunity to be in industry, connect the dots about what are the jobs, what are they doing at Google, and then take that same energy and inspiration, take it back to your classrooms so that you firsthand can tell your kids, look, this is what I did for the summer with Googlers. Like how powerful is that? And still receive this, the stipend and the graduate uh, credit hours, again, to continue their own personal development and professional development. And so I dropped a link there for the, the attendees. This is where, this is, Mason is currently the only institution and it's in the, the capital region right now, but we are, Google is also exploring other opportunities in other metropolitan areas to do something similar. But I wanted to call that out uh, as something and how we see ourselves as partners in this work. Yeah, um, Shaniga, I just want to say congrats to you and to Google for creating that. Honestly, if I had had that when I started Digital Pioneers Academy almost you know four years ago, it would it it would have been a game changer. And so I'm sitting here thinking about you know this audience who may not have this focus on computer science, who may not have a teacher who is a, has a computer science background. It is exactly that type of resource that gets you started. And so what I would say to school leaders is like, you don't have to become Digital Pioneers Academy where like literally we teach computer science 45 minutes every single day, just like we teach math and science. It is part of who we are. But what I would say is like really all you need is one teacher who is interested and excited and passionate by this to be able to start an after school club. Then you can start uh, an elective program and then you can start it as a, um, a required course. Like you starting small is just the first step you need to do. And so being able to have access to a program that actually trains and uh, gives these teachers experience is exactly how we can expand computer science for all for real, as we say at DPA. Michelle, Ron's back. Thank you so much. Ron is back. I think we have, we're about at time. So thank you, Michelle. I what told you I would, thank you, Shanika. Thank you so much. I told you I would talk for forever, but that, that went by too fast. So thank you. Of course. Ron, please. 
Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And, and, and yes, if we were in face to face, we could go on and on. And I would love that because I think that our, our panelists were incredible. But I think we have a lot more questions as well. Virtual does have drawbacks because I got to thank Shanika and Mache. Thank you so much for, for participating. You started us off with a bang. Uh, Jennifer, I don't know if you have any information you'd like to share as well uh, um, in terms of surveys and the like. But uh, I will turn it over to you before we close out. Yeah, just final. First of all, thank you so much to Mache and Shanika. I um, it's the first time we've ever done this. We really didn't know what to expect, but I was already just sending an email like we couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, so just thank you so much for such an engaging conversation today. It was was so much against us. I felt so inspired and hopeful. Thanks to both of you and your conversations. Um, so. And I already have ideas, you know, growing for what we could do this summer. So not to forget, we will be face to face this summer. We hope to see you all there. Um, one more plug again, you're gonna get this um, survey monkey survey, please fill it out. It's gonna be really helpful to how we um, structure the day and a half um, in July. And we look forward to seeing you in Los Angeles. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jen. For all those who will be continuing on with us for the rest of the day, our next uh, uh, session uh, that you don't want to miss will be at 12 noon uh, Eastern Standard Time. So you have about 15 minutes to take a break, uh, run to the restroom, grab a snack. Uh, it will be maintaining access to equity funding of charter schools led by people of color. And we've got some great panelists for that as well. So take a break and join us back at the session link. Thank you so much, folks, for participating. See you soon.